Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about large scale cross field image geolocalization. So image geolocalization, the objective is that for a query input image, so as you can show, uh, see here, uh, this may be a photo taken by a tourist. We want to know where uh, this photo is being taken, right? So where the GPS location. So image geolocalization has typically two settings. One is the um, same view geolocalization. So for a query street view image, we have a reference database, uh, which is from the same uh, ground view. So all these reference images are, uh, will have a GPS tag. So what we do is we find a match from this reference database. And uh, if we find the top one match while well, using uh, the GPS um, tag for this reference image, um, using that as the prediction for the query. Another setting is the cross view uh, geolocalization. So for the query street of image, the reference database um, um, consists of images from a different view, the error image or satellite images. So usually the satellite image has more coverage uh, of a city. So the idea is the same. So we'll have this uh, query image and finding the match based on the similarity. And we are using that prediction um, for the, of the reference um, and as the prediction for the query image. And geolocalization has many important applications. Uh, we can use image geolocalization uh, to correct the noisy GPS coordinate and to assist uh, the mobile navigation. Here's another example uh, using cross view for street navigation. We can also use in cross view geolocalization uh, for UAV po pose estimation. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, the work uh, street to every view matching for image geolocalization and the orientation estimation. So this is the uh, joint work with my PhD uh, student, Sijie and Tao, and the work was published um, in WACV 2021. So there's a couple, there are a couple of main challenges uh, for cross view image geolocalization. One is the appearance gap, right? So as you can see from this example, uh, the query street view and the reference area view image uh, are, looks very different. We also have the sample imbalance uh, challenge. So typically for one query image uh, in the reference database, we have uh, one positive uh, match uh, area image. So we only have one positive match, but the other reference images we all consider uh, will all be considered as negative. So we have a lot of negative samples. Another challenge is the image alignment. So um, most existing database um, like CVUSA, they have these um, image alignment information. So basically uh, the image pairs uh, are aligned. Right, so for this example, for the street view panorama, uh, we have from the left um, starting point, we have uh, the zero degree indicating this is the south direction. And this corresponding to the error image, this direction corresponding to the uh, zero degree, the south direction. So uh, all these images pairs follow this kind of alignment information. And this may help uh, the model to learn some geometric patterns. Um, but um, for real applications, um, a street of image may be uh, taken at an arbitrary heading, right? So we may don't know the alignment information. So we did some experiment um, to investigate how the alignment information will impact the uh, retrieval performance. So look at if we look at this table here, if the model is trained uh, with the aligned image pairs, and we, te uh, we test that uh, on the validation set, which is all aligned images. And we have 6.1% top one record accuracy. But if the model is trained with aligned images pairs, but we test that on the uh, randomly rotated area images, right? If we randomly rotate these area images, then the alignment information is gone. Okay, and we can see that the performance drop, uh, you know, dramatically, right, from 60% to 13.5%.
So alignment information does has a big impact on the retrieval performance. So this slide shows the overall framework of our geolocalization method. So the input will be a pair of image, uh, the, the query panorama street view and the uh, reference area view images. Uh, if you don't have panorama, it will be uh, a cropped street view image and the corresponding area view image. And these two images will go through two separate CNN models to learn feature representations uh, separately. And uh, we will have these feature embeddings. And the goal is that for matched or positive pairs, we want them to be close uh, as much uh, as close as possible in the embedding space. But for the negative pairs, we want to pull them far away um, you know, to each other. So there are many uh, matching losses you can use from the literature of deep metric learning. So like contrastive loss, uh, metric, triplet loss. And here we are looking at a specific uh, loss function called the binomial deviance loss. Here are the SIP and SIN denote the cosine similarity between the ith anchor and its positive and negative samples. And the MP and the NN represent the number of positive and negative pairs. And the M is a positive margin parameter. So this loss has been used in person read identification. In this paper, um, in our paper, we introduce a new loss function. Uh, we have uh, introduced uh, two coefficient uh, alpha p and alpha n for the positive and the negative samples. We also have two margins, uh, mp and mn for the positive and negative samples. So this gives more flexibility how we can control uh, or how we are able to push the negative samples far away or pull these um, positive samples close to each other. And since I uh, mentioned in the uh, beginning, in the cross-view geolocalization, there is only one positive match. So it would be easier to pull the only match sample close to uh, the anchor rather than pushing all the negative samples away. So in this case, we can assign a smaller value to alpha p than alpha n uh, by using this loss function. We evaluate our method on two standard uh, benchmark data set, CVUSN and the VO data set. So CVUSA contain, um, contains uh, panorama street view images and VO data set uh, contains those cropped uh, street view images. Um, from the result, we can see that uh, our uh, method consistently outperforms the other uh, approaches um, at top 1% uh, recall accuracy and top one recall accuracy. So uh, this, this is the same um, for the VO data set. And here we'll provide a couple of geolocalization examples. On the top, we have these query street view image. And on the bottom, we have these retrieved area view images. So here we show these top five retrieved images. And uh, for this example, uh, the ground truth, uh, which is using the green box uh, to highlight that, is actually the top one uh, retrieved image uh, for our method. So this is the correct top one retrieval. And this example, uh, the ground truth uh, is ranked fifth in our uh, retrieved list. So which is this image. So actually, this is a pretty difficult um, example. Um, if you see all these uh, top five retrieved image, they have kind of similar patterns, right? With this road, one road leading in this direction. Um, this is uh, one example on the VO data set. Um, the query is going to be the cropped uh, image. And this example shows uh, the ground truth uh, is the top one uh, retrieved image uh, of our method with a very high similarity, 0 0.76. We also showed a failure case. So for this example, the ground truth uh, is ranked at 5,984, uh, so which is not like the top five or top 10. 
right, the similarity is uh, very low, 0 0.47. So this is a failure case. And we also want to um, provide some visual explanation of the matching result, right? So if this is a match, uh, matched pair, uh, and why do they uh, match to each other, right? Is there any similar object uh, inside these two images? So we use the technique called grading cam. Um, if you're not familiar with grading cam, uh, it was proposed um, for image classification. So the activation map indicates the pixels or regions contribute the most to the classification decision. For example, uh, as you show in this figure, the, classi the classifier made a prediction. This is a, a cat image. And the grading can highlight the regions or pixels contribute the most to that decision. So it highlight these uh, body region of this cat. So similarly, uh, if the classifier predict this is a dog image, the grading cam uh, highlight the regions, uh, the dog face region. So these pixel contribute the most to the decision of predicting this is a dog image. And in this work, we adapt grading cam for metric learning uh, applications. And um, the activation map highlight the regions contribute the most to the final matching uh, similarity, right? So here we are using we using the circles to highlight uh, the region contribute the most to the similarity measure. So for this current image, uh, these grading cam activation map highlight these house, this house, and here the front of the house. And in the area view image, uh, the activate most activated regions are corresponding to these two houses. And here's another example um, of the uh, explanation using grading cam. So the query highlight the, the side of this uh, house. And here uh, on the area image, the grading cam also highlight uh, this house. Um, by doing these uh, visual explanation, we actually uh, have an interesting uh, finding. That is, if we rotate the um, area view image uh, to a certain degree. So for this example, we rotate the area image 30 degrees. And we find that the grading cam activation map does not change much, right? So here is the original area of the image. This is a query image. So the kind of highlight on the, the road, uh, on this road. And if we rotate this area image, and we can see that the activation is still highlighting on the road region. And here is another example. So if we highlight, if we rotate uh, this area image to 25 degree minus 34 degrees, and the activation map on the street view uh, image does not change much. Okay, so this means that the grading cam have this kind of rotation invariant property, and we can actually using these properties to uh, perform rotation estimation. And uh, here's how uh, the rotation estimation um, pipeline. So we can generate the grading cam activation map on the query and uh, uh, reference image. And based on that heat map, and we can set up a threshold and generate these uh, binary mask, highlighting those most activated region. And then we can generate these angle distribution map. Uh, I mean, the angle distributions for the area view image and the street view image, right? So we have these distribution across uh, from zero degree to 360 degrees. Okay, then we will find an angle so that the distribution uh, P area will best match the distribution P street. So basically for these two distributions, we, find to, uh, we want to find a point that has the maximum correlation. By using this method, we are able to estimate uh, the rotation angle. So here's a example uh, for the orientation estimation. And the ground truth is 126 degree, and the estimated result is 125.2 degree, which is very close to the ground truth. So in summary, we have a key observation that is the alignment has a great impact on the retrieval performance. 
And we show that improvements on the metric learning technique will boost the retrieval performance, you know, by pro proposing uh, a, a new metric learning loss. And we discovered that the orientation information between cross view images can be estimated when the alignment is unknown. Next, I'm going to talk about our CVPR 2021 uh, paper uh, titled Bigger Cross View Image Geolocalization Beyond One to One Retrieval. Existing works uh, usually assume. Uh, that each query ground view image has one corresponding reference area view image whose center is exactly aligned at the location of the query image. However, this is not practical for real-world applications because the query image may be generated at arbitrary location in the area of interest, and the reference images should be captured before the query emerge. So in this case, perfectly aligned one-to-one -one correspondence is not guaranteed. So in this work, we propose a new benchmark to evaluate cross-view geolocalization in a more realistic setting. Briefly, given an area of interest, the reference area, area image are densely sampled to achieve a seamless coverage of the area of interest. And the street view queries are captured at arbitrary locations. If a query location at the cent lie at the central area of, a, of the area image, Okay, and we call this um, positive samples. So these are considered positive samples since they are, uh, you know, located in the central of this area image. Other queries outside the central area are defined as semi-positive samples. So here, the other query outside the central regions, we consider them as semi-positive. To guarantee that any arbitrary query has one positive reference uh, image, we propose to densely sample the error image with 50% overlap along latitude and longitude directions. Okay. In total, we collect 90,618 area images covering the central area of four cities, including New York, uh, we're using the Manhattan area and Chicago, San Francisco, and Seattle. Then about uh, 200,000 street view panoramas are collected on most of the streets. So here, these uh, red lines are indicating the streets we are collecting uh, the street panoramas. Um, this table shows a comparison with existing data sets. Our data set also provide the raw GPS data for meter level evaluation, which is the ultimate goal of localization applications. So each of the um, reference images will you know, accompany by a GPS tag. Um, this slide shows an example of two query images covered by one aerial image. So these two stars, red and green ones, are the two uh, query locations. Here is the overall framework of our cross-view uh, localization method. So the input will be a pair of um, images, query image and the reference image. So it could be either positive or semi-positive as we defined before. And these two images will go through uh, two uh, independent CN models to extract features. So here we are using this uh, SAFA method, which is spatial aware embedding to generate spatial uh, aware embedding features. And we got the, and we're using metric learning loss to, um, to you know, train the matching model. And we also have an auxiliary task to do the offset prediction, which basically doing the, um, you know, GPS refinement. So we have these regression loss. So we train these two losses together as our, um, you know, the geolocalization method. Since um, one query image may have um, semi-positive images, the question is how to use these semi-positive images, right? We can directly considering, we can directly consider these semi-positive as positive uh, samples and using them uh, in the retrieval process. And 
the result indicating that um, by you know, simply considering the semi-positive as positive, it results in the lower accuracy from this table. So the first one is we don't consider semi-positive. And the second is we consider the semi-positive as positive and the result in the lower accuracy. So in our proposed method, we force the ratio of the similarity in the embedding space to be close to the ratios of the IOUs. So we have these IOU plus based semi-positive assignment loss. And the results show that by using these um, IOU loss, uh, the performance can be greatly improved. So either for the same area uh, evaluation uh, protocol and the cross area evaluation protocol. So for the same area means uh, we, the training and the evaluation are coming from the same area, like in the city of New York. For the cross area means the images are coming from um, different areas. Maybe the training is from New York and Chicago and the testing will come from Seattle. So once we have the uh, image uh, retrieval process, then we go beyond uh, the retrieval. That is, we conduct uh, these GPS refinement. So we have this, this auxiliary task that is to do the offset prediction. So we have the predicted uh, offset of the query GPS location relative to the reference GPS location. And we also have the ground truth offset. So then we'll have this regression uh, loss uh, to trying to, to predict or minimize the difference between the prediction and the ground truth offset. And we conduct um, experiment and compare, uh, compare our method with the state-of-the-art approach on our data set. So for these two evaluation settings, same area and across area, our method um, outperforms the state-of-the-art method um, at different evaluation metrics, top one, top five, and top 1%. And this is consistent uh, for both of the settings. So this is the retrieval performance. Since we have the, since the images, we have the GPS tag, we can also uh, evaluate uh, in terms of, you know, meters, right? How accurate is your localization in terms of meters? So we, we set different uh, arrow threshold from a zero to 40 meters. If, the, the prediction um, geolocalization arrow is under five meters here, then we can consider this is accurate match. So that's for the threshold at five. So if we go to the threshold at 10 meters, um, then any arrow below 10, we consider that's an accurate match or prediction. So this curve shows that our method consistently outperform the other method at different thresholds. So for the same area and for the cross area. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, at uh, very uh, low threshold regions like 10 meters and 15 meters, our method uh, outperforms the SOTA SAFA method about um, maybe more than 10% in the same area uh, setting. We also analyze the effect of offset prediction. So in this uh, figure, the, the blue curve shows uh, we only employ the retrieve. So once we have the retrieve and we will generate the accuracy. And the red curve shows uh, we also using the offset prediction uh, based on the regression, right? So the regression um, based offset prediction is able to improve the geolocalization accuracy uh, in terms of meters. And this black curve, uh, which is using is a one uh, baseline, which we use in classification to do the offset prediction. Basically, once you have a retrieved image and we, we, we the center region, we divide them into, divide the center region into 100 uh, grid. So we have 100 grids, and this becomes 100 way classification problem. And we are using that uh, for the offset prediction. Um, again, so we 
the regression based uh, method uh, you know perform much better than the classification based method the gps data provided by the commercial devices such as phones could be noisy uh, in urban environment for example the phone based gps arrow can reach up to 50 meters uh, in manhattan new york so image geolocalization can also assist mobile navigation so to further validate the potential of cross-field geolocalization, given noisy GPS signals, we simulate GPS signals by noisy sim GPS signals by adding random offset, for example, uh, minus 100 meters, 100 meters to the ground truth GPS data um, in our data set. So in, the, in this case, uh, in the reference stage, the query image can be matched with only a small subset of the reference image around the noisy GPS location instead of you know, the entire reference database. For noisy level uh, of 100 meters, a search scope of 200 meter uh, radius is sufficient to cover all possible reference. So for this table, uh, we conduct different search scope uh, for the noisy level of 100 meters. So based on the result, we can see that if we reduce the search scope, right, which means we have less uh, reference uh, images uh, in the matching process, the accuracy or the retrieval accuracy uh, can be improved right, gradually. And we also uh, do, do this GPS refinement uh, in terms of uh, evaluate at the meter level. OK, again. This figure shows that image geolocalization can help correct the noisy GPS to some extent, right? So compared to the original, by doing this kind of uh, image geolocalization and refinement, we are able to improve the accuracy at different threshold. Um, however, if you look at a very low threshold, like five or 10 meters, the accuracy is not very high, like only 10 or 20%. So which means this is this task still challenging in this very realistic setting. To summarize, uh, in this work, we'll propose a new benchmark for cross-view image geolocalization beyond one-to-one -one retrieval, which is a more realistic setting for real-world applications. And the proposed method significantly improves 10 meter level accuracy. So we are actually able to um, boost the performance from 11.4% to 25.5% for the same area evaluation. And we can boost performance from 2.8% to 6.2% for the cross area evaluation. And we also validate the potential of the proposed framework for noisy GPS refinement, and which has the potential to be applied to this kind of assistive navigation applications. And our data set uh, is publicly available. So this is the website uh, for the data set as our, our method. So all the code and the trained model are available on this web website.